And the gentlelady yields back, and the gentleman from California. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This has been a very interesting hearing. I've, I've heard so many different sides. I heard one of my good friends from the other side of the aisle say that the Bush administration did not support reforming GSEs. That's fallacious. I met with the President many times on this issue. We probably sent the bill to the Senate three, four, maybe five times. And there was a filibuster that occurred, and it wasn't by the Republicans to stop the bill from being heard. So that is the fact on there. I corrected one thing on you earlier, but that was just wrong on that. And I, I'm having trouble with a lot of facts out here. I'm not taking sides on an issue. No doubt we've got serious, serious problems. But I'm hearing a lot of debate that doesn't make sense when it's applied to reality in some way. I, Mr. Calabria, you, you, you made a great statement on mortgage-backed securities because the only mortgage-backed securities worth a darn are GSEs out there. The alternative when the market got really good in 2004, 5, and 6 was a private sector countrywide decided they'd come in and be major players in the marketplace. Now, if we'd have defined predatory versus subprime, they would have never been in the marketplace. But they played a huge part in the marketplace, made a tremendous amount of loans to people who could never pay them back, sold them off to the private sector, and the way those loans are bundled, they can't be debundled. Now, the GSEs, I will say that if you buy a mortgage-backed security from the GSEs, you will get what you're promised, because they bundle them in a way where a non-performing loan is removed and replaced with a, a loan that is performing. And many of the loans that the GSEs are eating today are because they're taking those loans out and replacing them. The problem we have is, let's go back to 2008. When you look at the total losses in the marketplace in 2008, the lending sector lost about $2,700 trillion, $2 billion in losses. Now, understanding at that point in time that Freddie and Fannie represented 70 percent of the marketplace, or 31 million loans, they lost, Fannie lost $117 billion, Freddie lost $67 billion. A lot of money, but let's put it in perspective. They had 70 percent of the marketplace out of $2.7 trillion lost. They lost less than $200 billion of it. Unacceptable numbers, no argument. There's been statements made that the problem is that we made loans to people with low down payment. But VA and FHA do that today. Let's look at the reality. In my district alone, L.A. County, VA and FHA loan defaults are 2.6 percent. Freddie and Fannie are 3.9. The Jumbos, 10.1. Obviously, VA and FHA are doing very well making low down payment loans. In Orange County, the FHA-VA default rate is 1.4 percent, Freddie and Fannie 2.1, the jumbo private sector is 8.9. San Bernardino County, a high default rate in San Bernardino County overall, uh, VA and FHA is 3.5 percent, Freddie and Fannie 7.8, jumbo is 18.4. So if the logic is that a low down payment means necessarily a high default rate, the numbers don't verify that argument. Um, to make a loan to somebody that they cannot repay, doesn't matter what they put down, they're going to default. If they can't make the payments and they put 20 percent down, they're still going to lose the house. If they put zero down and they can't make the payments, they're still going to lose the house. So if we would have taken at some point in time and said, let's define predatory versus subprime, which I know I put it in at least five bills going to the Senate and my good Democrat friends filibustered it, matter of record, not fallacious, we would probably not have some of the problems we have today. And if you look at the chart, a great example of that is delinquencies today. Had we taken and, and fixed the problem in 2000 when we tried to fix predatory versus subprime, the subprime arms had a default rate of about 5 percent. Now you go from 2000 when we did not fix it to 2008, they had a default rate of 38.7 percent. Why? Because nobody bothered to define predatory versus subprime. The default rate also, if you look at um, the middle range market, an average, when about 2000 was about 2 percent. The average to, in uh, 2009 was 8 percent. Default rate for Freddie and Fannie in basically 2000 were non-existent. They did, had no default rate. It rose in 2009 on the, on the Freddie side to 3.1 and Fannie si side on 4.2. It's, it's too high. It's too high, but the average market's 8 percent. Subprime is 26.5. The better subprime, the ARM subprime, is 38.7. So when you look at the numbers, you say, is there a problem, a serious problem? 
with the entire industry. I remember when I was a young man in my 20s, if I went to borrow money from a lender for a construction loan, if I didn't meet conforming standards, they would not make me the construction loan. Why? Because at the end of the day, if there was probably not going to be a lender to make them the loan to do the takeout on the house I just built. So Freddie and Fannie were basically created to provide liquidity to the marketplace. Had Freddie and Fannie not been there in 2007, you could not have given a house away, period. Wall Street was shut down, private sector was shut down, Wells Fargo, B of A, didn't know if they could survive the next day. So what do we do to the taxpayers in this country who own a home? 65 percent of the family has owned a home. Many of those homes have double, I ran out of time, didn't I? <laughs> I hate this I when I'm preaching. I love to Notice preach. I should have been a preacher. If I was a Baptist, I'd be a preacher today, but I'm not. But in closing. Was, was there a question in there? For yeah, there was. I never got to the question. My question was, I heard a lot of great information today, but I heard it from a lot of different perspectives. And when you put it together in reality, you see there's some basic problems that should have been corrected. Was low down payment the problem? According to FHA and VA, no. Was underwriting standards a problem? Absolutely. And guidelines were problems. Predatory versus subprimes were problems. And Chairman, I hope we have a lot of these because there's so much we need to get on the table because I know you have a passion on this issue and so do I and many other members. But we have to figure out what we're going to do to fix the housing market in this country without destroying it. And if Freddie and Fannie don't make sense, let's get rid of them. If they can make sense with modifications, let's look at that. But let's just don't make assumptions based on an entity that has 70 percent of the marketplace and is performing better than any, any lender sector out there today other than FHA and VA. So when we move into getting an answer for this, let's move with that understanding and move yeah. cautiously. And I yield back to Bounce. I, I appreciate that. And Thank you for your generosity. I'll seek unanimous consent to allow the um, witnesses, even though it's overtime, just to give a short yeah, answer his glo global, um, yeah. and then that will be our last. Um. Well, uh, there was an awful lot there, but let me first react to in, two th in 2007, Fannie and Freddie were actually pulling back, and one of the reasons that Paulson gave for taking the conservatorship, but, but yes, but was, that, was to get them to make more lending. Now, the fact is today that the reason they are making lending is because their losses and their debt are essentially backed by the government. I put it this way, you cover all my losses, guarantee all my debt, and I'll go out and buy a whole lot of mortgages too. So we have to remember what is the important part here that's keeping them together. I 100 percent agree that down payment alone is certainly not the determinative factor. I think FICO score is far more predictive of default than down payment. So certainly that could be trade off. Uh, I do think we need to keep in mind the vintages of loans that we're looking at, as you were very well aware uh, in about 2000. Can I ask one question on one statement sure. for me, which is very legitimate? Um, Yes, on Freddie and Fannie's making loans today, but the underwriting standards are tremendously different yes. than they were three or four years ago, especially on the high cost areas. They're very stringent. Yeah, let's let the panel complete because otherwise we'll. Uh, so, but one I was going to say, yeah, in comparing FHA to to, to uh, Jumbo or, or anything, any other part of the market, you do have to look at vintages. As you uh, are, are well aware, FHA's market share in California in 2005 was about two or three percent. So there was very little lending where they picked up since when the loan limits were raised. So my point would be you have to make sure you're comparing 2005 to 2005 loans, and, and, and that's an important part of it. Uh, I do think you can offset uh, the down payment if you put other factors in there and require good credit quality. Uh, my I would be happy to submit comments in writing. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I look forward to the discussion of this at another hearing should you ever want to invite me back. Oh, okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Gunk. Chairman, for having us. Well, thank you. And I, I thank uh, all.